Today I'm going to create a trend CD cover. What's going on everyone? My name is Tom from Dreadlabs. I'm a graphic designer if you're not familiar with my channel yet. And today what we're going to be doing is creating a Y2K style trends CD cover. Literally two minutes before I started recording, I found this cool CD cover of a 2005 trends compilation CD. I'll show it up on the screen right now. But basically, if you've been keeping up with me and my channel, you know that I have been on a vacation for three weeks. And that means that I didn't really like bulk record any videos. So I kind of have to do some quicker videos for now because I have some really cool, dope, more thought out videos planned in the coming weeks but for now i thought let's just do something light trying to recreate something that i've seen on the internet maybe show you guys a couple of techniques that you're not familiar with yet and all in all have some good fun with cinema 4d and i think photoshop before we dive into the video i am going to be using a couple of assets from my own webshop for this in order to make my workflow a little bit faster of course if i had more time for this video i would be doing most of it myself but using assets does save a lot of time especially in my case if you have to do a lot of designs or a lot of recordings you know every week but without any further ado let's Let's get into the video. All right, so as you can see, I'm here on the Discogs page. I'll put a link down in the description for this if you want to get the CD for yourself. But basically, what we're going to be doing is try to recreate these like cool spherical things within like these cubes, some fluid abstract background, and of course, doing the, the typography. And I see a lot of these blueprints kind of things laid over, really metal hard like, I guess, Y2K ish. So if you don't know, I recently released a metal hard pack, which is going to make our lives a little bit easier, I think. But I'm going to try to do most of this in Cinema 4D. I'm going to be using Using octane renderer but mostly for this kind of stuff you don't really need a specific render engine so you can just follow along and render it in your own render engine i'm just going to do octane because i'm more familiar with it with any further ado i am going to place my reference image on the other screen right here so that i can keep a look at it and let's start out with a sphere so the first thing we're going to be doing is create an hdri environment basically making sure that we have these nice reflections on our spheres and we're not going to do that with all my thumbnail photos here we're going to do that with some hdris that i saved up usually these are like really mostly i think they were using sky and uh, let's see i think this is a sky hri and yeah this this kind of works so if we look around you see clouds you see the ground and sun should be good. yeah there's the sun so let's start by entering a sphere and we're going to make an octane material make a metallic one and drop it on there and as you can see we now already have like our metallic sphere which is nice i'm gonna add some segments in it because you can really see the low poly so let's just do 64 maybe and I think what we need to do is up the roughness here so we can kind of make out the reflections, but not really. A little bit, just a little bit. All right, so let's start with that weird cube thing. I don't know. So let's start out with a circle and we'll make sure that the circle is the same size as the sphere. So a radius of 100 centimeters. And I'm going to put this into a sweep. So underneath... Here you can find the sweep and I'm going to hold Alt or Option on my keyboard while I'm clicking on this. And then I'm going to also drop in another circle while holding Shift on my keyboard. This second circle, we're going to make a radius of one centimeter. So it's just a nice, well, maybe five. Let's do five for now. And basically we're going to copy this and paste it. And instead of the second circle, we're going to add in a rectangle. And the rectangle will also be 100 by 100 centimeters. And we're going to drop that underneath here so in the sweep and if we take a look I'm not sure where the actual rectangle is so let's make the sphere invisible ah okay so we need to make this a little bit bigger i think uh i think 200 right because it's not a circular object of course all right so here we have our like edge so let's just group these together in a null object and we'll have the edge and i think i'm going to put this into a cloner See if we can actually make have this thing make sense. Uh, so we're gonna do two by two, I think. Let's just do radial and then count of two and then make radius 100 centimeters, I think. All right, there's it. That's yeah, that's pretty much what we want. I'm gonna duplicate this cloner one more time. And there's probably an easier way to do this within the cloner, but I'm just like trying to work as fast as possible. So essentially this gets the same result we're not going to give this the exact same material because if you take a look at the reference it looks like it has a little bit more roughness so let's up the roughness on this one and drop it on cloner let's just group that actually so it's just one object so we'll have both of the cloners together and we'll call this edge i think this is basically pretty much what the reference is maybe we want to have the sphere a little bit larger so it kind of like pops out on the sides Let's do 110. Uh, all right, so this is the main object. So let's just group that together. And we'll call this like 
sphere in cube or something. All right, so that's the main object. So now we're gonna try to create that fluid background that you can see. I'm just thinking of a way to do it. And I'm actually gonna use a metal heart technique that I saw on YouTube by another tutorial. And I'm actually gonna link that tutorial in the description because uh, this is not my technique. I just learned this from someone else. Kind of forgot the name, but I'll put all the details in the description. And if I do not, you can yell at me and I'll edit it later after I see your comment. Anyways, let's just grab the sketch tool. And essentially what we're going to try to do is just create some random shapes on each axis. And with this spline, uh, I think you were supposed to do put this into a lathe or maybe in a loft. I'm not sure. Okay, not a loft. Maybe in sweep. Now we need to for a sweep. Doesn't really matter how we achieve it. Okay, this is a little bit weird, I guess. Uh, I think a lath lathe thing works best but it's not the what i was expecting actually but let's see if we can make this work because i'm like kind of butchering the idea of this tutorial and i'm going to watch another tutorial while i'm doing a video myself of course let's see you know what i'm just going to grab a reference material from a pack that i made myself all right so it was a loft but it was just three separate splines so i'm actually going to redo this now we'll sketch make sure that these are separate splines and now we're going to put these into a what was the loft i already forgot doesn't really matter of course you just drop it in and yes that's exactly what we were looking for uh, so it looks a little bit harsh right now that's okay what i'm going to be doing is put this into a null and i'm going to put a twist deformer in there and i'm going to put it to unlimited and let's just spin this around a little bit now we're going to soften this with a subdivision surface and there you get your Y2K glossy weird thingy. It's a little bit small still. So let's just undo the subdivision surface and scale this body up. And I'm actually already going to try to create a camera setup right at the get-go. But for now, let's just move this guy a little further away. Also give this a metallic material and I think we can up this a little bit more. Maybe the metallic one. Let's look at the reference a little bit. Yeah, the, the or sorry, the roughness one works a little bit better, I think. So let's move into the back a little bit more. And I think this, yeah, he has to be scaled up drastically. Oh, what happened there? Uh, so we got this like giant thing in the background and I think that it's actually pretty okay. Oh wait, it's really large right now. Doesn't matter. Let's just focus on the cube thing here. So we'll call this background. So now with the sphere and cube thing, I'm gonna just go and create a cloner, add some distance in between them. And we're going to randomize the position on these with a randomize effector, which is over here. Uh, so under parameter, we'll up the positions to maybe like 200 as well as the rotation. Maybe we'll do a little bit less, like do one here. And then we'll do, I, I think we're going to do more in the Z axis, like uh, maybe 700. All right, looking cool. And then we'll just do reseed a couple of times, see which one works best. I think this one works quite nicely. Let's add an octane camera to do our setup because I said I would. Let's also make this Y2K and create a fish eye lens. Works also like a little bit better for these kind of artworks. All right, now we have a little bit more control. Uh, let's move the background. Maybe we'll do like another deformer here, like maybe like a bend. All right, all right, all right. Looking, looking like one of the artworks of all time. I don't know why the axis is so weird, but let me try to. I'm gonna fix it or ignore it. Where is this? Is this like really far away now? Okay, it is really far away. Let's see. 
turn the access to world so we can just move this a little bit closer. Let's keep an eye on our, our composition here. Also, I'm going to change the mode to, or the aspect ratio to square and change my render settings to octane renderer. All right, so let's see if we can rotate this thing a little bit more. Okay, now um, let's take a look at the reference material. It starts to look quite all right, in my opinion. So, okay, I'm just gonna go and expand the cloner because I'm not gonna try to remake it that much, but I wanna have more control over the positions of these spheres. So, we'll just do connect objects or current state to object. And just turn this one off. And then we should have these spheres and cubes here. And then we'll just delete this one. Just move this one a little bit closer to the camera. Kind of getting there. Um, so in terms of the background, I'm not really happy with it yet. So let's see what we can do about that. Uh, let's scale these splines up maybe. Ooh. All right, all right, I like this. Um, so, uh, all right, so the next thing I wanna do is see, I wanna wanna see the sky here. So we can either do a second background or we can just let the camera have some aperture so that we can focus more on the foreground instead of the background. So let's do try to do that first because that's a little bit easier I think. While we're here let's put on the camera, camera imager and put on the denoiser uh, just in case. Let's go to that depth of field and go to aperture. We'll do auto focus but let's just focus on there specifically. Okay yeah this is not gonna work I think because the background is way too far away. So let's just do auto focus and lose the aperture so what we're gonna do next is i think we're just gonna go copy the copy this and just rotate a little bit and move it to the back all right so we need to null both of these so to have them like both subdivided but now we can just move this thing around freely and fill up the rest of our background a little bit more I'm just gonna try to, maybe I'm gonna try to scale this up like crazy, like five, 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 and then move it all the way to the back. Yeah, this fills up a lot more. I don't like the way this is affecting the, the polygons, so let's see what hap what's happening. It's just too big right now, I think, yeah. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna give this guy a separate uh, subdivision surface. And I'm gonna kill my computer while doing whilst doing this, I think, but all right, five. Okay, <laughs> five. Uh, I'm definitely gonna turn off recording when I render this, but I'm not sure why this one is. Ah, wait, this one is in there as well. We need to put that out of here. But yeah. All right, sorry. I'm kind of messing up a little bit, but that's okay. Not really looking what I'm doing in the layer menu. Uh, it happens sometimes. Uh, I think we're good now. Let's try to actually fix the composition now. I'm just gonna not talk and do a little bit of time-lapse work just to fix everything you can see here in this messy, messy setup. All right, so as you can see, I kind of fixed it. And what I did was I just made a really large plane with a displacer on it. So we'd have some fluid movement in the background, but not too much. Uh, looking at this, I think I want to bend it a little bit still, which obviously is going to go a bit bend the wrong way. Let's go out of the camera real quick and try to fix that. 
a lesson to learn from this is where it's going wrong here is I'm using way too large objects in this and it's just because I'm doing like stuff way too fast right now and working way too fast because I just want to get this video out but if you're doing something like this just try to keep it to normal size proportions that are humanly correct if that makes sense otherwise you're going to get messy stuff like this and Cinema 4D is not going to understand what's going on here anyways so what I think we're going to do is just render this out for now I'm kind of okay with where it is So a little bit more rotating in the on the camera and other than that I, I think we're fine we're fine for now I think let's see all right with everything all right so let's just render this body out and then uh, I'm gonna see you in Photoshop where we're gonna do the rest of this CD cover all right so we are here in Photoshop where you can see that we successfully imported our render here could use some work composition wise but of course this is just all like doing everything super speedy which brings me to a point if you're looking at this file right now in this video and you're seeing my work progress and you're like i can do this way way better than tom which i wouldn't blame you if you could you can actually get the project files for this video and all of my other videos and tutorials if you become a patron of mine so thanks to my patrons i'm actually able to give you guys weekly videos and gives me the time to work on these instead of having a full-time job besides dread labs because if i would i wouldn't have the time to create these videos for you guys so by becoming a patron you really heavily support the channel making me be able to do dread labs full time giving you guys more content in the progress and of course as a thank you you get access to over 100 photoshop files illustrator files after effects files and cinema 4d files as well as a 15 percent discount in my asset web store as well as an exclusive role on the dread labs community server and if you go one tier up you also get exclusive tutorials such as the illustrator basics tutorials making a death metal logo from scratch and much much more so if you want to become a patron there's a link down in the description and if you don't have the budget to support dread labs of course that's completely fine leaving a like comment and subscribe if you haven't already already does a lot with all that being said let's just get back into the video so the next thing that i want to do is i want to create that like bluish look so we're going to change this with the gradient map and under the gradient map let's just see what we can do i'm going to try and make a really dark blue starting color and immediately go to a really saturated dark blue and then go to a better saturated blue more like this i think kind of towards cyan almost a little bit like this and of course, the, this doesn't really solve anything because it really just makes everything look a little bit more too blue, I guess. So we're going to change and play around with the blend mode of the gradient map. And I think soft light usually works well for this. Uh, for now, I think a little bit too dark maybe. So let's just add in a curves adjustment layer and make everything a little bit more lighter. Let's see which blend mode works a little bit better maybe. Actually, I think this works fine, but let's just delete the white. Let's just create, try to create a like almost cyan blue for this. Works a little bit better, and I'm going to actually manipulate the hue saturation for this. I think the color is a little bit off. A little bit towards here, and then we just make everything a little bit lighter, maybe. To actually really get the color right. Let's just make a sample of what we think the color is or should be something towards here maybe or is it just like a really light bluish purple let's see what happens if we just put this on color or hue okay hue doesn't really do it i think uh let's just remove the hue and saturation and the curves that we just put in and actually what i'm gonna do is just literally paste in the reference image sample a color from that artwork and then it's just instead of using you I think overlay maybe or all right I think you works best in this case so um, next everything is a little bit sharp and that's because it's a like a nice high quality render and these things were usually rendered on a computer in 2005 or earlier which essentially means the quality should be a little like lower i guess one thing how we can fix that is adding some nice glows and blurs which we're going to do right now so let's see what happens if we add some box blur to this uh, maybe a radius of nine and then just change the blend mode a little bit to like lighten to create like nice glow effect um, also want to see what happens if we just add a diffuse glow to this so let's go to filter gallery distort diffuse glow add some grain 
see what happens if we just change the blend mode to overlay or something like that maybe too harsh let's just make everything a little bit lighter like this so it does make everything a lot lighter so let's lower the opacity just a little or maybe we just need to lose the yeah we kind of need to fix the curve here like that all right we're getting somewhere so the next thing i kind of want to do is duplicate this and add some like heavy heavy blur so let's go to filter blur radial blur and we'll just use the spin method on zoom yeah this gives it trans vibe i guess let's see which blend mode we can use for this also nice but not what we're looking for what happens if we just invert this and okay nope uh trying to experiment while i'm doing this is also it just just makes everything more fun i guess uh, i think we're going to use the lighten let's see how much difference does that make okay we're going to experiment with this blend mode a little bit more because i feel like we can just do this better if we have the underlying layers jump in everywhere this this works pretty nicely but then maybe you just mask out pieces here and Whoa, what is this? I'm not sure what hap what's happening here, so I'm just gonna close off Cinema 4D. All right, yeah, clear these guys a little. Bit. What? All right, so the next part is we're gonna add in some metal hard graphics, and I'm just gonna not make these myself. I'm just gonna use the an asset pack that I recently released. The link will be down in the description. This is from Dreadlips Metal Hard Essentials. Let me just grab it on the screen right here. The first thing we're gonna be using are these overlays, I think. I think we could benefit from maybe like a weird grid-like overlay. Has a little bit more of a blueprint kind of vibe. So something like this, maybe. This could also kind of work. I think this one would work quite nicely, actually. The thing, however, is, I, okay, we're going to need the grid, but we're going to need to lose the other one. So what we're going to do is just go to grids and select the grid from here. I think this one would work nicely. Which one was it? Grid number three. So let's just drop that in. Drop it like somewhere here and then just lower the opacity to maybe like 25. So the grid's like visible at some parts of the artwork, which is nice. Then there's also like a lot of like weird cryptic stuff going on. And I think we have something similar to that underneath the separate elements folder. So let's take a look here. So something like this kind of looks like it could fit in here. Something like, like the crosshairs maybe. And something like this. Uh, I do have a grid similar to this, like a circular one, I think. So let's go back to grids. Yeah, we have this one. And then I think at the end, yeah, we also have these ones. Well, there's also these separate elements. And I think there's also something... Wait, we just looked at that. Maybe it's the overlays. Yeah, it's the overlay 20, as you can see. This would also work pretty well, but I think what we're going to be doing is go with the separate element one, which was this one. And it's kind of apparent right now, of course. Uh, so let's just put the blend mode to maybe 20 or something. And I also want to make this even more subtle by removing the fill and adding in a stroke and then having that stroke fill up. So that is just like more greediness, I guess. So the next thing here we're gonna be doing is we'll just group everything together and call this background. I feel like the composition of this render could be using... I, I wanna center the, the thing a little bit more. And I'm gonna mask out some parts of the grid as well. Like especially like that separate element thing. I'm not sure what's going on here, why it's doing that weird thing. Thing. Ah, wait, okay, so that has to do with the um, the stroke, I, I guess. So let's just group this thing here, mask it, and then just start masking out. Because, that, yeah, that works a little bit better. So I, I just want the grid like, to be invisible where the cubes are. I think we also going to use something else, and that's on a different asset pack. It's not from mine, but it's available on dreadlabs.net, and it's called Negentropy's Layers from the Wired. So let's just drop in our folder. Let's see where it is. Layers from the Wired. So these really, really help with this kind of artwork. Codes, secret files. So yeah, this secret file, this layer right here, really, really like gives it the same vibe as the um as the the cover here so let's just off center this a little bit more 
And let's just do the numbers on the left here. And we'll change the blend mode to lighten, maybe screen, and then just lower the opacity a little bit more. And we're just gonna duplicate this mask so that it's like going to the background here wherever the cubes are in place. But yeah, that's this makes the background a little bit more noisy, I guess. Shout out to Legend Tropy for this, uh, this artwork or this aspect. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a font. Let's just see if we can find something that fits within Adobe font so a lot of people can just use it as well uh, instead of my custom fonts. Uh, this just makes it easier because if you have an Adobe subscription, you can just sync this font through Adobe fonts. I said font a lot in that sentence, but so a font that really works well with this kind of style is called Sofa Chrome, and we're just gonna go to Google Trans Master. It's not exactly the same, but yeah, the vibe is kind of the same, I guess. Let's just slant it ourselves a little bit like that. And we'll do the 2005 as well. What I do like is that the zeros are a little bit smaller. So let's just do that as well. Actually, we kind of need this to go up. So we'll just do, we'll do like all of these in a separate manner. All right, so let's group 2005. Actually, let's just scale this up a little bit more. Uh, actually, no, no, I think we're fine. We're fine. All right. So the next thing I'm gonna do is grab the Trans Master font, and then um, we'll just do like two CD, a little bit more smaller at the top, and then we'll also do this at the TV. TV advertised. <laughs> advertised. Does that mean that this was like on a TV commercial? These guys have to be smaller. So let's just align them properly. So we can just scale them later. While I'm doing this, let's just go and create a guide layout. We'll do 60 pixels everywhere. Make sure everything is aligned properly. We'll do the 2CD and we'll just make this font a lot smaller. Whoa, no. All right, so now we're gonna do all of the styling on all of this, these text layers. So let's just group all of them together. So the first thing is I see a really, really subtle purple inner stroke, or maybe like a stroke around, around the center at least. So let's just do that and make it like really, really small. Lower the opacity a little bit. And then it needs a fairly harsh drop shadow actually. Make the distance a little bit lower and maybe a little bit more downwards. All right, so maybe a little bit more subtle. And then I think we're good to go. Let's just do one more thing and let's just make this into a smart object, duplicate it. And under filter, we'll go to blur, motion blur, because this is actually a really cool thing. I remember doing this when I was just trying to design. And we'll just do the distance on 45 maybe and we'll just put this to the back because as you can see we have this like nice white blur around the edge on the reference material and then basically uh, we also need some text at the bottom here you know what I'm actually gonna just like write down some patrons instead of like actual DJs so for this I'm just gonna go and duplicate the text that we have here And I'm just gonna write down the patrons that have been the longest patrons uh, of the channel so far. Uh, and while I'm saying this, a huge shout out to all of these people because some of these people have been my patron for over two years now. And it's insane that these people are actually willing to help me and the channel and the community out like that. So a huge shout out and thank you so much for being my patron. And if you're not featured on here, of course, don't worry, I appreciate each and every single patron. So yeah, shout out to you guys. All right, let's put this nicely in the corner. I make it so it aligns with our boundary box here. All right, looking nice. So this of course needs a little bit of noise still. So let's just do that. We'll just fill in our an empty layer with 50% gray. We'll add some noise through the noise filter. 15% should be okay. And then we'll just put it to overlay. Works well. And then I'm just gonna go and press control or command, alt or option, shift and E to make a duplicate. And I kind of want to see if we can like JPEG eyes this a little bit to make the quality as low as you can see these covers are if you find them on the internet because it's been a long time since these were uploaded so i think think we're gonna create get it with just a blur but we're gonna do one pixel gaussian blur we're gonna do a mosaic so we'll pixelize it just enough so that it's 
yeah like this maybe and just like a subtle box blur maybe just one pixel and we'll sharpen it maybe all right kind of okay so we try to lo-fi this a little bit i guess this is the original and this is the difference as you can see maybe if i put this to like overlay or something like that okay now it actually starts to look a little bit more like these classic covers but yeah i don't know kind of looks okay anyways guys uh, there you have it a trans cover that i just whipped up i hope this video was a little bit more chill and a little bit more mellow you can kind of see my process i'm usually trying to like talk you through all of my steps but since this video is completely improvised it may have been a little bit difficult for you to either understand what i mean while i'm talking because i also try to translate things in my head when i'm like working on this uh, while well, at the same time it also might be a little bit difficult because i'm not explaining every shortcut that i'm using so i would understand it if you are not really that much into this type of content but don't worry because there's a lot more other types of content coming as well where the quality of the video is a little bit higher i'm trying to shoot a little bit more b-roll make the videos look a little bit more interesting i was for this i thought it what might be fun to just go back to the core of what i did when i just started this channel and that was just trying to design something cool so yeah i would highly appreciate your opinion on this type of content because you know seeing your feedback helps me improve the channel and of course like i said if you want to get the project for this uh, there's a link down in the description by becoming a patron you'll get access to all of my project files including the file i made in this video so with all of that being said this is tom from dreadlabs tuning out thank you so much for watching and i'll hopefully see you guys in the next video